and welcome back. Today is our third day here in the beautiful Jerusalem and I have a day packed with activities to show you here in this beautiful city but we are going to start with the long awaited promise of bringing you guys to the city of David. So that is going to be our first stop for the day and we're going to hit all sorts of places from the market to the garden tomb and you have to stay tuned to see what else we show you. Let's get this day started. I'm so excited. City of David, a place where the past is present and every stone tells a story. Just beyond the ancient wells of Jerusalem, this remarkable site beckons you to explore its secrets. It isn't just a place, it's a window to history. It cradles the oldest remains of Jerusalem, connecting us to a time when King David ruled here. The City of David is more than just a name, it's a portal to our past. So come as we stroll through the same paths that King David once roamed over 3,000 years ago, where he established the capital of the tribes of Israel. So get ready to embark on an extraordinary journey. Okay, so we are officially in the city of David. We are walking in down towards the archaeological ruins. Now we are not going to do the tunnels today because claustrophobia, but we are going to be able to go around them and enjoy the gist of it. Stepping into the city of David, we're immediately transported to an awe-inspiring site, the legendary stronghold of Zion. From this vantage point, you're treated to an enchanting panorama of Jerusalem, a view that truly captures the soul of this remarkable place. As we journey through the city of David, we are offered two intriguing tunnels, each revealing the secrets of its underground water supply. One marked in yellow on the map, which takes you to Hezekiah's tunnel, the other marked in blue, which guides you through the dry Canaanite tunnel. A challenging choice for many tourists, but both tunnels eventually lead to the same destination while providing distinct experiences. But what about those that find underground tunnels daunting? Well, here's the secret. The red route, often overlooked by tourists, offers an alternative. You can bypass the tunnels entirely, either on foot or by shuttle, leading you to the very point where the tunnels converge, the Cylon Pools. So let's get walking and make our way right there. We're finally making our way down closer to the pool. Now it is possible to hike it. I would say it's the most of the way. It's relatively easy. The only part that really gets hard is the street right behind me. As you can tell, it's really steep going down. But as long as you bring some good grip shoes and something to hang onto the railing in case it's hot, then you're gonna be just fine. You can certainly make it in here without the tunnels. And we're about to go in. We have been wanting to check out this place. So Let's go look at the pool. The Siloam Pool is a site of profound historical importance. Discovered in 2004, this remarkable place offers a glimpse into its storied past. Once a vital source of fresh water for Jerusalem, it's now dry with only remnants of its former glory. The Siloam Pool holds a deep spiritual significance for Christians. According to the Gospel of John, Jesus performed a remarkable miracle here, healing a man born blind. This story resonates through the ages, emphasizing the importance of this serene site. Today, as you walk along the stone steps that once held the living waters, you can still witness the remnants of what it used to be. The tranquil surroundings allow for reflection and contemplation, connecting you with history and spirituality. The silent pool may no longer hold water, but a significant flows through time, reminding us of the profound events that unfolded here over 2,000 years ago. we depart from the timeless echoes of the Siloam Pools, we step into another realm, a hidden labyrinth of tunnels. It was through this very tunnels that the lifeblood of ancient Jerusalem flowed, providing water to the sacred pools we've just explored. Today they offer a unique window into the past, where exhibitions provide a glimpse of daily life from those bygone eras. In the end, the tunnels would lead you back out to the modern streets of Jerusalem. 
Okay, so the pool's right behind us. It honestly doesn't look like much at first glance. You really have to know the story, feel it, and even if you don't, just from an archaeological point of view or just hearing the stories and be like, well, that's kind of cool for them. It's cool. Yeah. I liked it. It was worth the hike. It is now time to leave the pools and all their majesty and head towards the Gibadi excavation site. Location and we are actually at the Jabadi parking lot excavation. Now this point right here is one that most tourists miss coming to in a spot that you certainly do not want to skip. Now the excavations here started in 2007 and they have discovered things from Roman era to the Byzantine era and it used to be a parking lot. And with your ticket to the city of David, you actually get to come in here and see the excavations taking place live before your eyes. And I can honestly say that that is worth the ticket alone to see history in the making being discovered. Um, overall, you know we couldn't miss it and neither will you now because we are showing it to you. Gavadi parking excavations in Jerusalem are a window into the city's rich history, providing valuable insights into its past. These excavations, located in the heart of the ancient city, reveal a captivating tapestry of historical layers that have unveiled during archaeological endeavors and brought to light a fascinating array of artifacts and structures. These findings include remnants of ancient dwellings, fortifications, and even traces of daily life from different eras. Exploring the Gavadi parking and excavations is like embarking on a journey through time. As you navigate the remnants of Jerusalem's past, you'll gain a deeper understanding of how this city has evolved over the centuries. The city of David has been amazing. Look at this. Looking at the excavations has been amazing. But I do want to continue sightseeing today. So I'm going to get out of here and go on to my next spot. towards the ramp that will lead us in to the Temple Mount. Now this place is actually quite interesting because a lot of faiths uh, share this place. Yeah, there's a lot of significance depending on your faith, whether you're a, a Judaism, Islam, or Christian. Yeah, so we are certainly seeing like a variety of ethnicities, uh, religions, nationalities <laughs> going in there. And even for those who are like history freaks, it also has a lot. It does. So that's where we're going to walk. And we're going through this really cool tunnel right here, um, which actually allows you to see the Western Wall from a height. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty cool. And it allows you to see the city from the other side. So just from the beginning of it, you're already getting like a double whammy because you get to see different things. Dome of the Rock is truly an iconic symbol in Jerusalem's skyline and a masterpiece of Islamic architecture. The stunning Golden Dome Shrine stands atop the Temple Mount and is believed by Muslims to be the spot where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. It is also in this very grounds that Jews and Christians alike believe that Abraham prepared to sacrifice his son Isaac. guys we are officially out um, we we went there about 40 minutes before it closed but um, unfortunately they did close it early so we only get to see it for about three minutes um, and that's totally okay at least we got to see all the beautiful buildings and now we're heading towards another attraction here and going through the cotton market area and that is what we're gonna do Okay, so we have arrived at the garden where, um, they call it the garden tomb. Yes. And it's a beautiful place 
oh, with flowers, trees, very meditative. A very quaint place, yeah. Very quaint place. They also have uh, what they believe to be the tomb mm -hmm. here as well, and a lot of people uh, singing as well. So overall, it's a, it's a peaceful environment, and it's a nice little break from the city. Yeah, so if you're on this side, it's right outside the Damascus Gate. Uh, probably be worth coming over here and just it's free it's and free walking so in here and seeing it yourself yeah check it out and they uh, I think they do accept like donations yeah. and stuff to like the upkeep but it's a nice place so definitely add it to your list yes. the garden tomb welcomes visitors into its peaceful garden providing a space for prayer and reflection on the life of Jesus Many individuals find solace and comfort in the symbolism and serenity of the garden tomb as they step into it and admire it from the inside, making it a meaningful stop for those on a spiritual journey. Although the garden tomb lacks concrete archaeological evidence directly linking it to the time of Jesus, it does offer a comforting representation of what an ancient burial site might have looked like, and it provides a serene and emotional experience for those who visit. The garden stands as a reminder that even in the face of historical ambiguity, faith and spirituality can be practiced anywhere. Yehuda Market, also known as the Shuk, is the beating heart of Jerusalem. With over 250 vendors offering a diverse array of goods, this market is a vibrant tapestry of life, culture, and a maze of captivating sights, sounds, and aromas, creating an intense sensory experience that you'll remember for a lifetime. Just a 10 minute walk from the center of Jerusalem, the Shuk beckons you to explore its magnificent displays of spices, an array of mouth-watering foods, and the contagious energy of the place. Whether you're a casual observer or a seasoned market enthusiast, the Shuk offers truly an unforgettable experience in the very heart of Jerusalem. Tell
love you. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and for coming along with us on this adventure. If you like to see more videos like this, please make sure to subscribe, like, and don't forget to click that 